Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Sounding the trumpets against those who will oppress us by suppressing the truth. We're going to find out in this video that we are now in what the scripture calls the war of words or the war of doctrines and ideas and beliefs. Well, in this class, we want to discuss some of the tools we have against this war, how we can fight this war. We know we have prayer. We know we have good thoughts and good deeds, but we also have a material weapon, one we don't think about too often, but one that has been proven to me to work time and time again, and that is the sounding of the trumpets. We see here in Numbers chapter 10, it says, and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So, we have these trumpets to go to war against the enemies of truth. Now it's time to use these weapons. Now it's time to put up the good fight against those that will keep us blind and ignorant to our Father's ways, trying to lead us into darkness to the place where they are. But anyway, let's jump right into it. Now, one of the first places that I want to bring you is to the Third Testament of the Bible. This is actually probably the main truth that these guys are fighting against, trying to shut down the Third Testament of the Bible. They don't want you to know about it. This is actually the second coming of the Messiah. Just like he was the word made flesh, he has come again as the word of God, just like the book of Revelation said he would. But those people who hate our father and hate his ways and want nothing to do with the Messiah don't want you to know about this book. They want you to put your faith in man. They want you to believe that the Messiah will return as a human. This is their plan. You've heard of the New World Order. You just need to understand what the Old World Order was and then it'll make sense. If you was paying attention, you remember President Reagan called the Old World Order the Law of the Jungle. What he was referring to is the Book of the Covenant, where we depended on our Father to help us to understand what the rules of life were. Well, in the New World Order, man gets to set the laws with total disregard for the scripture altogether. He gets to be our king. He gets to remain as our king when our Messiah, our Father, our Creator wants to be our king. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. When our Creator takes reign over the planet and rules. But those who are in support of the New World Order don't want you to understand that. The plan of the New World Order is to elect a man to the United Nations that will rule the world as the Messiah. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, but you have a lot of people who are going to lead you straight to the Antichrist. In fact, they're already paving the roads to the Antichrist by suppressing the truth. So let's come down to the Third Testament, chapter 7 and verse 47, which says, The war of ideas, creeds, religions, doctrines, philosophies, theories, and sciences shall come, and my name and doctrine shall be on every mouth. And that's where we're at now. Everybody's talking about the Third Testament of the Bible. Those who are reading it love it and know that it is our Father speaking to him and the return of the Messiah. But the oppressors of truth, they won't dare read it. They don't want you to know from which direction our Messiah comes. Like I said, they're going to present a man to you, a person, a fleshly being that they're going to set in front of you and say that he or she is the return of Christ. And this individual, whoever he is, has the assignment to take you straight to hell if you will follow him. You get a hint of this over in the book of Jeremiah chapter 14. Starting at about 14, when it starts talking about these false prophets. People who claim that the father told them this and the father told them that. You watch their videos, they'll tell you that God told them that the rapture will be next week. Or that it'll be tomorrow night or sometime. You guys who watch these channels should be a little bit ashamed of yourself. I mean, think about it. They've been telling you that you're going to be raptured for the past seven years. But yet, nothing has happened. And all they've done is waste your time. Never have they given you any other scriptural doctrine to go by. They haven't taught you anything that will help you. They haven't taught you any ways of the Lord like the Sabbath day, feast days, or any of that. 
All they're telling you is that you can do whatever you want down here on the planet because the rules have been done away with and in the end you're going to be swept away into the spirit world in what they call the rapture. Now, Satan always adds truth to it to make it make sense to you. The truth is, sure, you can break all of the covenant rules that you want and yes, in the end you're going to be swept off into the spirit world. But we who know the truth don't call it the rapture. We call it an extinction level event where over 70% of all humans are going to die in the day of judgment or the day of his wrath. But look down in verse 15 what happens to the false prophets. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land, but sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. So, here again, like I said, they're telling you that you don't have to worry about the rules and you don't have to worry about any consequences of breaking those rules. That's what it means there when it says, they say unto you, sword and famine shall not be in this land. They're telling you that you are guilt free and you don't have to do anything for your own salvation. But look at what it says happens to them. It says, by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. This will be their judgment. Those people who you are following this will be their fate, but don't assume yourself innocent because look at verse 16. It says, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So those who are following these guys, these false prophets, these people claiming that the law doesn't exist anymore and claiming that you're going to be raptured off and miss all of the trouble of this world. Well, for you, it says that you will be cast into the street and apparently you will be dead because it's saying that none will be able to bury you, nor your wives, nor your sons, nor your daughters. This is the result of rejecting the truth. The Torah means instructions. The instructions are for the survival of the tribulation. So if you are in rejection of those instructions for your survival, you are actually in rejection of your own survival. And those of your family who are following you, they have no chance of surviving either. So all of you who follow these false prophets will be cast in the street. And we learn in other places that it will be the birds that will eat you. All while those who follow the law and follow the instructions will go on to inherit the earth. The third testament goes on to say, My new coming will be argued and judged, and from that shall arise great believers, proclaiming that Christ has been again among men. So here we are. Those who are reading, like I said, reading the third testament, they see from which direction the Messiah is coming. But those who are in rejection of the truth, they have no idea, and the Antichrist is their only hope or their death is their only escape of the things that are coming up on the world. But you see here that the result of this war of ideas and creeds and religions and doctrines is going to build some with a greater faith, a greater belief, a greater understanding of what's truth. And they're going to be the ones, like I said, to inherit the earth. It says, at those moments from the infinite, I shall encourage those hearts to perform prodigies where they pass to strengthen their faith. This is talking about the Great Awakening here. Those who have faith in the Word are going to be empowered, if not already done so. I see evidence of the empowerment already since about January the 13th. But I believe a lot of people are still awakened to this idea. They are awakening to the truth. And that's why it's important to go after those who are trying to oppress the truth because they are standing in the way of these people. Another book that I want you to know about is the Gospel according to Thomas. Look what the Messiah had to say about those ministers who will oppress the truth. He says, Damn the Pharisees! They are like a dog sleeping in the cattle manger. The dog neither eats nor lets the cattle eat. So here these guys are standing in the way of the kingdom of heaven. They're standing in the way of your opportunity to see the kingdom of heaven by suppressing the truth not telling you that the law, the Torah, is the instructions for your survival and not telling you what it is that you have to do to gain salvation. They don't want to see the kingdom of heaven and they don't want you to see it either. So when we put up videos that tell you the way, 
what it is that we're supposed to do to gain salvation these guys are coming up with ways to make these videos to where they can't be seen at first I thought it was just me because they don't like coaching the fight but I'm seeing that it is other channels it is like all of the truth channels are a target of this deception this heresy this oppression of the truth but anyway Let's look over here at John chapter 6 and verse 53 and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Verse 53 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. This is talking about Passover. This is why there are so many people who are trying to tell you not to keep Passover or they're telling you to do Easter instead or they're giving you the wrong dates for Passover or they're not telling you exactly what you're supposed to be doing on Passover because you see here that it says if you do not do it correctly it says you have no life in you these people are trying to kill you they're trying to leave you stressed out in the streets of Jerusalem for the birds to eat look at 54 it says whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day Again, talking about the communion festival on Passover. Here in the year 2022, we see that we're supposed to have this communion feast on April the 15th. That is the 14th day of the first month. The first day of the first month was, of course, during the sighting of the new moon. You have to remember, the word month comes from the word month, which comes from the word moon. The sacred month is dependent on the moon. It is the moon that determines the month. So these people are trying to distract you from this point so that you don't know when the month starts. And if you don't know when the first day of the month is, then there's no way for you to know when the 14th day of the month is. And because they have blinded us from this truth, then they can make up and say any day that they want Passover to be on. Some are making you keep it early. Some are making you keep it late. But either way, by missing Passover on the evening, sunset of the 14th day of the first month, which, like I said again, corresponds to the 15th of April at sunset, these people can and will keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. And this gets extremely important in the year 2022 because the most important day of the spring feast, which is unleavened bread, well, that's also their Easter Sunday, and that's actually what they're trying to do. See, there are three groups of people that will be present on Easter Sunday. There will be those who will be keeping unleavened bread. Those will be the people who will receive the seal of our Father. But then there will be those who will be keeping Easter. They will receive the mark of the beast. And then there will be those who will do neither. Those people will be on their own for their own survival. This is a deadly game that they're playing by keeping the truth from us. Like I said, they're actually trying to kill us by putting us in a position where we're completely defenseless and dependent on our enemy for our survival. Coming back over to the third testament of the Bible, chapter 39, looking at verse 35, it's also talking about the war of ideas. And it's talking about his disciples during this time. But it says that moment will coincide with the war of ideas from which shall arise like the relief of peace, like the ray of light, spiritualism. And this is what they're trying to prevent you guys from understanding, spiritualism. Like I said earlier, they want to put your faith in a man, in the Antichrist. And to keep the truth suppressed, to keep you unaware that our father comes back as a spirit being, is all they have to do to get you lined up behind some man some government official or some very important leader that they're going to put their faith in for their survival. Chapter 54 talks about the same thing in verse 1. It says, Just as I announced my coming in this second era, I announce to you now the war of creeds, ideas, and religions as the event foreshadowing the establishment of my reign of spirituality among men. So, he's saying the second era, that's when he's talking about the word coming as flesh, the Messiah, about 2,000 years ago, where he's saying that this time his coming will come with this war of creeds, ideas, and religions. So we already know that this day is coming upon us. Nobody is surprised who reads the Third Testament of the Bible that we're going to be faced with this war of creeds, ideas, and religions. 
and how it's going to foreshadow the establishment of the reign of spirituality among men. Nobody's surprised. The problem is the lost sheep, the lost children of Israel that is not aware of the truth. Me personally, I don't think it's fair that people could stand in their way and prevent them from understanding the truth. But that's all right, though, because we understand what happens to them. You look over here in Jude, the book of Jude, down in verse 6, he starts to quote Enoch and explains what happens to these guys. It says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitations. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So this is their fate here. Those who are oppressors of truth, he says that there are demons who are waiting to be unleashed on these people in the great day. And if you're not familiar who these demons are, I bring you to the Testament of Solomon, which is a book all about demon warfare. Well, when you come down to about verse 34, you start to hear about these 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of darkness. If you did not figure this already, we're talking about the 33 degrees of masonry. These 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of darkness are the foundations of the Masonic orders of the world. This is how they are controlling the world and empowering all of these lying politicians and religious leaders. And if you look closely, you see the first of these demons is deception. Come down to verse 35 and he gives you details when he said, So I, Solomon, questioned them one by one, beginning with the first and going down to the seventh. The first said, I am deception. I deceive and weave snares here and there. I wet and excite heresies. But I have an angel who frustrates me, and that's Lamechelelel. So notice here how the deception, this demon of deception, is the author of the heresies so these people are already under demonic possession when they come in to spread heresies and oppress the truth well if you keep reading you find that deception is only the first and there are six other demons that come along with deception those demons we recognize as the jezebel spirit that you read about over in the book of revelation chapter 2 so we don't have to concern ourselves with them personally and what will happen to them personally. But we do have to worry about those people who they are affecting, those people who they are targeting, those people who they are trying to keep the truth from. That's the purpose of this video, not to harm anybody. That's not my intent. They'll do that to themselves. The purpose of this video is to blow the trumpets against the oppression of truth and for our father to take action and take away their abilities to oppress the truth. He doesn't have to harm them to do so. He can simply just give them something else to do other than troll these truth channels. He can also make them aware of the truth and the error in their own understanding. But we'll leave that up to him. So we'll just do what we're told and that is to blow the trumpets against the oppressors of truth. Still in chapter 54, let's look at verse 3. It says, I tell you that for the peace of my reign to be established among men, a war of doctrines, religions, and ideas shall be necessary. A war in which one doctrine arises to combat another, and in which some use my name and my truth to confront the false gods of others. So we see here that this war is necessary. See, we have to recognize what truth is. If we did not have this war, you would have confusion in the kingdom of heaven. People who were still guessing about this and making up that. No, we have to have this war where the champions of truth have to flex their muscles, so to speak, have to build their strength in order to combat the lies. Well, it'll be these same champions of truth that will be the leaders in the kingdom of heaven. And those who are the champion of lies, they too have to gain strength. But it is only so they can be built up really high. So when they fall, they can come crashing down to the ground, recognizing that falsehood and deception and lies about the word of God is unacceptable. Not nothing to play with. But notice how it all turns out. It seems like these guys believe somehow that if they keep suppressing the truth channels and the videos about truth, they are somehow gaining ground. But... We know that truth wins in the end. So again, 
All we're trying to do is help those people who want to know the truth. We know how it turns out. So we're really not worried, except for those lost sheep who will fall victim to these false prophets and these false doctrines and ideas. Another truth that they want to keep from you is what we read over there in John chapter 4 and verse 22, which says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. See that what it says? Salvation is of the Jews. So these people want to actually suppress the truth of who the Jews truly are. They don't even want you to understand this simple verse right here, understanding that they are not Jews and they don't want you to know who the Jews are. What they want to do is steer you away from who the true Jews are, who true Israel is, and look who they're pointing you to. This is who they want you depending on for your biblical understanding. Those who they refer to as the Jews are only the synagogue of Satan. And this points down to their overall plan. Just like they want to steer you from the spiritual return of our Messiah into the Antichrist, they want to steer you from the true Israelites unto those who are only the synagogue of Satan. These are the oppressors of truth. Another truth that they want you misunderstood on is one we've already talked about, and that is how the sacred calendar works. I've been working on a story that I want to tell you guys about something I discovered while raising sheep. We have a ram, and if you know anything about rams, they're pretty dangerous. But we recently installed what they call a ram shield, a blinder over the eyes of the ram that makes it to where he can't see straight. When we put that blinder over his eyes, he went from a dangerous, aggressive animal that couldn't be trusted to a scared, timid animal that only could follow around the lambs and the female sheep. He became helpless. But this is what they're doing with the calendar. By keeping us blinded as to how the calendar actually works, they're actually putting a ram shield over our eyes and making it so that we can't see straight. So what they're doing to suppress the truth is giving you so many conflicting ideas of how the sacred calendar works with the sole intent of getting you to miss Passover or celebrate it on the wrong day. Well, one reason why they're attacking this channel and trying to suppress the truth here is because our father has allowed us to invent what we call the celestial calendar. This is a clock ran with a battery and a course chip that can actually keep time over the course of the year and predict new moons, Sabbath days, feast days, and other holy days. See, it's one thing to be running your mouth about the calendar, shouting out what you feel, think, and believe. It's another thing to have the confirmation of the celestials when it comes to your calendar. When you look at the book of Enoch, which is the authority on the calendar, and see how it aligns with what the celestials are actually doing in perfect harmony and then be able to produce a clock like I said powered by a battery that does the exact same thing this is why they want to oppress these channels this is why they want to oppress the truth it's one thing to be running your mouth about how the calendar works it's another thing to see it play out before your eyes using the principles of time as we were taught by Abraham, who taught the Babylonians how time works. Don't get it twisted, thinking that the Babylonians taught us. No, we, Abraham, taught them how the celestials work. They only mention Babylon when it comes to the sacred calendar, because they don't want you aware of that fact, that the celestials in heaven, talking about the sun, the moon, and the stars, are our father's timepiece. All we have to do is know how to read the sun, the moon, and the stars, and we'll always know what day it is. So let's blow the trumpets on these guys. We're told in Numbers chapter 10 what to do. It says when we go to war in our land, and don't be confused, this is our land. They've just found a way to blind us so that they can take control of it. Well, that ram shield is coming off. They can't stop the truth. 
all they could do is cast fear and doubts in the hearts of those who don't know the truth, making it so they have no part in the kingdom of heaven. These are the enemies trying to oppress them. He says, when you go to war, which we are at war, it says, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. So, let's make war against these enemies, guys. Let's blow these trumpets. All right, so let's do this. I got my boys out here, and we got a few horns. We got a trombone, a saxophone, and an old bull's horn. It's the best we could come up with. But I've seen this work before, and I don't think it matters what kind of horn we got. I think an old car horn will work too. So let's blow against the oppressors of truth, guys. Mm -hmm. 